to the leader of the Labour Party, Brandon Harland. Uh, over, the, over the last while, uh, we have heard Transport Minister Ross declare that reform of judicial appointments is his top priority, uh, far above anything in, of course, the Transport Department, we presume. In focusing on his top priority, he's launched uh, the most aggressive attack that I can recall made by a cabinet minister on the judiciary. Yesterday, the Irish Independent published a column written by Jennifer Carroll McNeill, an expert in the judicial selection process, and as you know, a former advisor to two Fine Gael ministers. She did us some service, uh, Las Corla, by documenting some of the statements made on the judiciary by Minister Ross in recent times. Uh, Minister Ross has said that the judiciary has had a charmed life since the foundation of the state. He said that the judiciary might forget their constitutional oath. He said that judges have a blank check to declare nothing. He also referred to the judiciary as a protected citadel. Now, when members of this House raise any questions about the behaviour of Minister Ross in relation to these matters, um, he normally attacks them by being apologists, uh, by being legal insiders. Uh, I don't have a legal uh, background, no more than yourself, uh, Taoiseach. Uh, I've never studied law or practiced law, so hopefully Minister Ross won't consider me a legal insider. But I do hope that you, Taoiseach, will share my concern at his recent statements. I don't disagree with Minister Ross on everything he said. The idea of a register of judicial interests is, I think, a worthwhile proposal. Politicians um, annually declare our interests. I don't see why uh, judges couldn't have such a register. And the same rule, as I said, should apply, but I don't think uh, Fine Gael agree with that. I also agree with him that there is no reason in principle why an inquiry into judicial conduct shouldn't have a lay majority. After all, judges are finally accountable to this House which I suppose is the ultimate lay panel uh, of the people. But the notion which he is determined to drive, and apparently is to be resisted by Fine Gael, maybe not, that only <clears throat> a lay majority should appoint judges is, in my view, bizarre. Would Minister Ross seriously be under willing to undergo surgery by a surgeon appointed by a panel of stockbrokers or journalists? Doctors, engineers, architects, academics, all of these are appointed by panels comprising a majority of experts in their relevant field. Any clear-headed analysis will conclude that being a judge requires expertise. And we need experts to assess that expertise of the candidates that are proffered. So, Thishuk, I have two questions. Firstly, will you publicly dissociate yourself from the comments made by one of your ministers, which clearly, in my view, crosses the appropriate line between the executive and the judiciary. And more importantly, will you confirm to the House, while acknowledging the value of lay minority, on the, in the, or, a, a lay minority in the selection of judges, that a majority of those involved in selecting judges right. should be made up of those with expertise in the law and practical experience of how the judicial system works. I have the utmost respect for members of the judiciary, Deputy Howland. I, I always have had that. Um, um, I, I, I do not accept that members of the judiciary would accept their judicial oath in respect of decisions that they make, and in that respect, I disassociate myself from the remark of, of, uh, of, Minister, of Minister Ross. I find that the vast, the, the vast majority of cases uh, are dealt with in the, in, the, um, in the best fashion by, by, the, by the courts. Uh, some of these are appealed and some are leaders overturned. Questions. And I'm quite sure that members of the judiciary themselves uh, are very cognizant of the fact that there are superior courts up to the Supreme Court and even the European Court where cases have been overturned. Uh, and it's, it's um, perfectly obvious that district courts' uh, decisions have been overturned, circuit courts, high courts, <laughs> Court of Appeal, and, and uh, even the Supreme Court, even this week, uh, make, make decisions that are, are perfectly within their right, completely and utterly independent of anything to do with politics. And in that regard, I, I have to say that I have always, um, I don't have much association with members of the judiciary, obviously. Uh, I expect them to do their job uh, fully and completely and as, 
in, in the best interests of, of the law of the country that they serve. Um, in respect of uh, the second matter, uh, it is a matter under the constitution for the appointment of judges uh, by the government. The question here is what sort of counsel do you have to, um, to uh, you know, assess the applications, the criteria, the qualifications, the expertise, the kind of, kind of uh, personality and character that people, that the people might be for appointment. Uh, and the matter hasn't been finalised yet, but the constitution is clear. Mm -hmm. The constitution remains, uh, remains, um, remains uh, and, and, and gives this um, uh, authority to the government on recommendations. If you, if you have a, a judicial council, that's a matter for decision yet. Am I hacked I welcome uh, the Taoiseach's reply. I welcome his um, distancing himself uh, from the remarks of, um, of Minister Ross. I think that um, an independent judiciary is an absolute uh, bulwark for our democracy. And we can see um, in our neighbouring jurisdiction where political comment encroaches upon independent judicial decisions, how damaging that is to democracy itself. So I welcome the Taoiseach statement. Um, in relation to the appointment system, I think um, uh, obviously constitutionally the final decision is made by government, but I remember many years ago when the current uh, system was decided upon politically, um, it was determined that uh, obviously we need an expert panel to make those recomm recommendations to government. And would the Taoiseach finally agree with me that that expert panel that makes the recommendations to government of those that are fit to serve in our judiciary should be made up in, a, in, a, in the majority, not in a, certainly in an exclusive sense, by practicing um, judges who understood and understand the complexity of the judiciary. Can I get the Haitian bomb uh, all, all judgments, as uh, members of the judici judiciary will tell you, are 90% uh, common sense and 10% law. If you've got to face the face to make, make the judgments and, and, um, and uh, make their decisions in the interests of the, of the defendants and the, and the law and the country. Uh, obviously, if this is always a balance, Deputy Howland, as to how it should be got right. At the end of the day, the government have to make the appointments on a recommendation from some group, council or whatever. Um, and I suppose, uh, I suppose the that the balance to be got right here is having people of expertise from both sectors, from the legal profession and from life, uh, who can say uh, on, on the basis of the applications, the experience, the qualifications and all of that, we recommend the following people for consideration to be appointed by, by, by government. Whether that be, uh, whether that be a council, uh, and I know that Deputy Ross, his best interests lie here in having, having these things absolutely transparent and accountable. Uh, whether you, whether you, uh, there's always the risk that if you appoint members of the profession only, or in a big majority, uh, that you, you, you need to have all professions open to all people where they be qualified and on the basis of merit. And that's where the discussion is in respect of how you do that. At the end of the day, constitution is not changing here. It's a matter for...